Hey guys, and welcome back to yet another episode of the Creativity Pod where we are going to be looking at more of artworks and creativity that is happening that is around Zimbabwe. So, yeah, we are at the Artillery Gallery here in Zimbabwe. So, yeah, I'm pretty much excited of what you guys are going to hear from the artists around here. So, yeah, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and share the video. And yeah, I would for more content. Okay, uh, my name is Peter Kaunda. Okay. Uh, I'm a patron of ours mm -hmm. and I've been running artillery for four years now. Oh. Yeah, uh, we set it up in 2018. Okay. And prior to that, uh, I'd been collecting art. And yeah. Yeah, so like this space, how long has it been running for? Yeah, since 2018. Okay. Yeah, so the gallery has been running since 2018. Uh, and yeah. Oh yeah, so do you have a like, different artist in this space or it's just uh, an open space for art? Yeah, so like I was saying, uh, prior to this, mm -hmm. I had, I've been collecting art. Okay. I've been meeting artists, talking to artists, just absolutely immersing in their mind yes. and enjoying their intelligence. Mm -hmm. And so that led me into wanting to create a space where I could hear more of what they were saying. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, literally put them on a pedestal and say, okay, so tell me what your story is. Mm. Uh, so the idea was to create a space where artists can just be themselves, mm -hmm. uh, where there are no limitations, mm -hmm. uh, and where they can tell their stories with, with no filters. Okay, so how many exhibitions, if you hold, because I used to remember this, the previous one that was happening, this one was running for how long? Right. Uh, so because of COVID, mm -hmm. uh, we literally got into a calendar season where it's literally month after month we've got a show scheduled. Yeah. Uh, we got a bit slow because July we're not going to have a show because it's winter and we thought, okay, let's take a break as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but after then, we've got shows every month uh, okay. lined up. Yeah. Prior, prior to that, our normal schedule was four shows in a year. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's changed because of COVID. Oh, <laughs> uh, because yeah. we were closed for so long and mm. artists didn't stop creating in their mm. studios. And so we also thought, hey, once we open up, we've got to. We never know. Yeah, we never <laughs> yeah, know. Maybe we'll yeah. close again, so this make the most of it. Yeah. Yeah, but I see more traction, like even on your page and all this. So yeah, you just yeah. have to like pick it up and then maybe talk more. So how many artists did like push up their work in the area? Uh, so we've got four artists represented in this show. Okay. Uh, they were in a residency program uh, okay. with, oh. an, with an organization called Animal Farm. Oh. That's run by another artist, mm -hmm. so it's an artist-run uh, residency program. Okay. So they were in that program for three months, mm -hmm. and this is the result of what they created in that, in that residency program. Yeah. 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 Okay. But they're all practicing artists, they're seasoned uh, artists, and yeah. Yeah, they've exhibited at multiple galleries before internationally. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, yeah. that's really so, nice. So, yeah, it just allows them to go into a space where they, like a cocoon, okay. where they can recreate something new. Yeah. 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 Okay, so maybe you can, like, tell us uh, where other people can, like, find you uh, online. Uh, so, we like you've mentioned, we've become a bit busy around uh, Instagram. Yeah. It seems more fun to work around. Mm -hmm. We are working towards setting up a website and getting busy with all, all our social media platforms, the yeah. Facebooks and... The okay. YouTube as well. Mm. We'd like to create content around art education and yes. stuff. Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 a process. We're growing organically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah you yeah. speak of art education. I think that's a really good thing, maybe to like talk about more. Yeah. How have you? Uh, is it working out? Are we getting there? 
to, uh, to accept art because I know how it is difficult you know for people to really understand artists or accept art or even like buying into it yeah mm. so prior to us becoming a bit more active on social media mm -hmm. this place was kind of set up in a way where we wanted to just see organic traffic yes. what comes in from uh, around uh, yeah. our surroundings mm. and through that a lot of people we've met have learned about art more yes. have met them they've, they've walked into a gallery for the first time mm. uh, so many people have come and asked do i have to pay to walk in here mm. so, <laughs> yeah. so to me that's a learning curve and that's us educating a new audience yes know? so yes. yeah i think we have educated some people yeah yeah uh, there is still so much more to to be done mm -hmm. you know? and yeah yeah, but I think you're really doing a great job and I just want to say like thank you for that thank for more artists much. and hopefully they'll come through thank some you. more. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> thank yeah, you. Thank you for the support. I yeah, think. sure. You paying attention to it mm -hmm. to this extent also kind of. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my name is Clive Tatina Mkucha. I was born in Sengeza, Nishtuweza, 1986. Okay. Um, I was educated there at a primary school called Nish I went to Kuleleko uh -huh. secondary school in Kwekwe then form 1, form 2, form 3 to 4 I came back uh, I was back in Stumbiza I learned at Sengeza 4 high school uh -huh. after that I went to Herenda school for my A level then I went to National Gallery Visual Arts School mm, okay. uh, from 20, 2007 up to 2009. Okay. Yeah, from there I started practicing as a visual artist. Mm. Then in 2000 and, what was 2013, oh. yeah, I was uh, granted uh, artist in residence there again at the National Gallery Visual School. Uh, in 2014, I was um, at um, Village Ulu, an artist-led uh, initiative. I was there for like one and a half or two years. If I, yeah. So that's like the, my journey up to now. I'm a practicing artist. Um, uh, what I can call myself a contemporary, contemporary. Mm. visual artist using found material. Oh, that's that's really awesome! Like, so how did your family, like, you know, co understand that you are mm. taking art as a form of yeah. profession? To some extent, it was not that uh, difficult. Mm -hmm. Was uh, my father is a social photographer. He started. Uh, doing photography in 1979 mm. so to some extent it's, it's uh, like it's runs yeah it's in, like hereditary in the yeah, family yeah, yeah. Yes, so yes. it wasn't that though mm. uh, maybe they wanted us to be like a doctor, doctor. Or something yeah. <laughs> yeah it's always like, like that said, ah, no, yeah. I'm a creative I'm not a, like a an academic. Yes. yes, I wasn't bad. Mm. Even in class, I raised my hand asking questions. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it's something which is like uh, didn't uh, interest me. Oh, I yeah. enjoyed the, the creative part, the drawing part, painting part. Mm. So to some extent, I just uh, thought maybe this is not for me. The education. You see, when you are young mm -hmm. and being uh, rebellious to mm. like schools School, yeah. something like uh, people won't understand like they will actually look down upon that yeah as you say well. ah, yeah. I don't know <laughs> it's a failure a failure definitely. yeah but yet to myself I say I failed a system mm. which was trying to be imposed on me because if I check on that system it's something which creates a worker, mm, not other than than a, what an employer mm. or a, someone who is innovative. Mm. It's just say you are a driver, mm. whatsoever you do, you will be keep on driving. Or yeah. if you are a doctor, you will be just a doctor up until age or something like that. Yeah. So with um, 
this creative uh, industry or the creative platform, mm -hmm. you can grow, you always grow. And yeah. there's a, a possibility mm -hmm. of uh, helping other people try or think in an innovative way or if you if you can see me mm. using something which you didn't think it was going to come out in a certain way yeah. uh to some extent even in your work area or maybe if you are a, an accountant yeah. or some to some extent you just try to think out of the box where you ask yourself how about yes Maslow said this mm, and this, that this part. And that. Ah, but I think maybe if I add this to this, maybe I'll come up with something else. Uh, to me, I feel I'm someone who like um, who uh, thinks outside of the box. Yeah, yeah. Work, work outside of the box and try also to ignite uh, mm. creativity in some other people's minds. Yeah. So like you, you have your piece right here. So maybe yeah. you, if you can take uh, take us through what was the you know inspiration behind and maybe the materials that you also uh, used maybe you can start with uh mm -hmm. maybe the, the materials we are looking at yeah these are like a synthetic canvas uh with metal sheets and some say plastic bottles consumerist products yeah um yeah basically ropes and some yeah and basically it is uh, so I uh, like uh, during the process of my creativity, yes. or my crea my my creative process, mm. I end up uh, finding uh, these documentation tags interesting. Oh cause, yes, because I realized that. Yeah, it's uh, like a symbolism of uh, aggression. It's symbolism of uh, mm. like conflict. It's symbolism of. Uh, pride is symbolism of ego mm. you see so on this artwork as a whole now mm -hmm. it's talking about uh insurgents in mozambique wondomo mozambique Wonder, okay yeah okay. so now it's more of a question or mm. more of a mirror where like what is happening in mozambique why are people fighting mm. uh why at the end of the day you see it's uh the it black killing black so-called black mm, or maybe, on black on black yeah crime. black yes mm. or the same tribe or different tribes but mm. same people yes. same family mm. killing each other for minerals who is uh, sponsoring those wars who is igniting those mm. wars and uh, is it from like a, what you can say uh, effects of colonization mm or uh, the effects of greed of the people was now mm -hmm. i think in this uh continent most of the the, the, the countries we are mm -hmm. said we are so-called uh, independent we are free from the colonialist part but yet we are acting the same way the it's colonializers yeah. were doing to us but yeah. now we are doing it to each other to each other so it's a matter of a question where like trying to have a conversation what is happening to us mm. and what happened to ubuntu what mm. happened to the self-respect we had yes maybe we had boundaries but we had no borders we had no yeah. i believe people back then mm. could share resources and could understand each other even if they couldn't uh, speak uh, the same languages they had respect of uh, cultures different cultures mm. and so yeah it's a matter of a question like what is happening to us in this contemporary in this uh, 21st century we say ah maybe we are, we are developed in mind in everything we do but mm. still we are still doing maybe even things where even the barbaric age, they maybe they didn't, didn't did. even had uh, wars like that. They didn't have even killings like, like the which ones we are giving. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so maybe uh, your last words to people who might actually listen, like young artists, because we all know that uh, you know art is a very difficult profession to take, uh, considering you know what we talked about. Mm -hmm. Parents will be expecting something else. Maybe like, what's your advice to someone who wants to take up art and actually make a living out of it, and also um what 
what do you really want to say maybe to young people out there who are listening when it comes to issues to do with art speaking or issues uh, that you're talking about? First of all, mm. oh, I, I, I want to demystify it. It's not a kind of a difficult mm. um, career. To some extent, it's the most uh, simple because you, uh, you, you, you don't have uh, limitations. Yes, maybe if you go through um, an education system, yeah, there are certain rules where you are taught, but at the end of the day, you are taught to break them. Mm. Because if you don't break them, there is no creativity. There is nothing you will be like uh, like contributing to the sector. There is other thing where you, if you love it, go for it, and. Also, don't um, like um, listen to other people what they say. Listen to your heart. Listen to your mind. What what do you have to offer to the people? Mm-hmm. And uh, you need to work hard. Mm-hmm. And you need to be strong on what you think it is. Because they are critics. They are just people who just come and say, uh, "What you're doing." Who end up to nothing. To nothing. But yeah. one person whom you inspire mm-hmm. goes away because that person will inspire another and the chain goes Keeps on. Going, yeah. Yes. That's like how it happened from way, 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 way back up to like where we are right now mm-hmm. in this contemporary age. So I say to them, if you have you feel you have talent, mm-hmm. work on it. But at the end of the day, be very, very, very humble. Mm-hmm. All right. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, do you, uh, is your, are your works on social media? Where can we find you to get to know you more? Or yeah, you mostly on Instagram and Facebook. On Instagram at Climac and on Facebook at Climac. Okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you very yeah, much sure. for your time. Thank you. We appreciate it. You're welcome.